Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's for horses, Scott. Yeah. Better for cows. Pigs are deedy, but they don't know how. <laughs> Back. Yes, yes. Nursery rhymes here this afternoon. Nursery rhymes? You got another one? No. No? I've uh, exceeded my limit for the week. Yeah, really? Yeah. So what's up, man? Well, we had a little incident, and I thought we might do something that might help some people out in the future. Okay. A friend of mine called me from the original, the real state of Texas, Amarillo Panhandle. <laughs> and uh, there was a dog, an 11-year-old Great Dane. How old? 11. 11. And I, it's been years since I was in the Panhandle, but apparently my fondness for Danes is still remembered. Here's this dog had a three-year-old toddler in a room while he was sleeping, and the toddler toddled over and fell on him. And he jumped up startled, and the grandparents swore he bit the kid, three-year-old. Mm -hmm. So when I heard the story, my first reaction was, gosh, have they buried the child yet? Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. Great Dane and a three-year-old. Yeah. And, and they said, no, he, actually, he never broke the skin. But out of an abundance of caution, they took him and turned him into the pound. And uh, he's up to be euthanized and uh, Rob and Thurston with, I forget their Great Dane Rescue, I told them about the situation. They said, nah, we ain't going to let that dog die. And so they went and picked him up, brought him back here from the panhandle. And I get three or four phone calls a month about dogs that have bitten a child. Rarely is there ever any blood? Usually it's a red mark on the skin. I understand today's generation looks at everything way different than my generation or Scott's generation. I also know that the pet industry is one of the most successful marketing industries in America. It's the only industry that's never gone through a recession. Every year there's more animals than there were the year before. Every year. Because mm -hmm. they know how to really sell what they're doing. And right now there's a whole bunch of people with not a lot of experience getting dogs. There's a whole lot of those dogs being killed, or you can say put down, being killed in pounds all over the state because some kid did something foolish or startling because some parent didn't know how to keep the two together. Or apart when needed. Or what? Or apart when needed. Yeah, right. Or well, apart when needed. Yeah. And dogs, dogs have their days, everybody else. Sometimes yep. they want to get pet, sometimes they don't. Sometimes yeah. they want to be left alone. Yeah. And you, you can read those, there's signs you can read. You know, <clears throat> Read your dog, basically. Right. But anyway. Well, no, that, and, and those signs we're going to talk about tonight. There's things you can do. I'm going to guess if you're watching this podcast, you're pretty dog savvy, and you might not have this problem. But there might be more, let's call them lay people, who have a dog who may be approaching you about this sort of a problem. So what I'd like to do is go over some of the stuff that we know about kids and dog bites, first and foremost, how to, how to prevent them. Second, what to do if something happens. And third, the repercussions afterwards. By repercussions, I mean, if they go to the dog pound, what's gonna happen to the dog and this sort of thing. So, 77% of all reported dog bites, reported, occur in a family setting with either a family member or a friend of a family member. That's probably makes up half of all the dog bites that occur in this country. So I have a general rule of thumb. At one time I had a Great Dane and a Skipper Key. I never let my little 
uh, probably 14 pound skipper key running around with my 180 pound Great Dane unsupervised. Mm. I just didn't. It just didn't make any sense to me. And yet we have people who don't think it because their dog is sweet. And maybe the neighbors come over with a little kid and little kids don't know any better. And they'll trip and fall on a dog and the dog will be startled and reach up and bite. I can't tell you how many times I hear someone say, the dog growls at my kid and I've either got to fix him, my husband said, stop him from doing that or he's going to put him down. What can I do? First, here's secret number one. And I'm going to tell you some things at the end of this video about surviving dog bites that you can tell everybody you know and all of your friends and neighbors. And if they are in a situation where there is a real vicious dog trying to attack them, how to safely get out of that. But they're, they're talking about, you know, I, so I'll ask them, when did the dog growl at the kid, right? Well, he was over here eating, and little Johnny ran those crawled. I said, well. The red flag right there, eating. Yeah, yeah, you know. And you know what my answer is? Better be glad the dog growled at your, at your kid, because he was warning him. Don't be upset with a dog, that's number one. Don't be upset if your dog growls at your children. And don't get on the dog. Don't kick Fido because he growled at the kid. Because I guarantee you, the kid was doing something to make the dog nervous or fearful. Period. And that growl from that dog is his way of trying to communicate to that child, you need to back off. That growl means this dog does not want to have to bite your child, but for whatever reason, that child's put him in the position where that's how he feels. What do you think, Scott? You got any goodies on that? Well, you know, it starts with respecting the dog. And if you can teach your kids to respect your dog, and there's boundaries you don't cross, then they'll get along much better. Yeah. You know, for example, you know, don't be bossy to a dog. But if are for more children, make them things they don't want to do. Ride in a wheelbarrow or something, the dog don't want to be doing that. <laughs> you know, do things dogs like. <laughs> That's a good one. You, yeah. want, you want to bring your dog up? <laughs> Start throwing the ball with him, playing fetch, whatever you need to do, you know. You know. Don't yell. And dogs hurt him or tease him or prick him or that's 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 a big red flag, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, there's one I I've seen and people like on the internet all the time sit with the dog, not on them. <laughs> you see kids rolling around on top of dogs and being, you know, you know that's, that's a good one. You know, don't yeah. kiss, hug, yeah, or pick up the dogs. Right. You know. Yeah, it's in trouble. Yeah. Don't dress dogs up. Uh-oh. I mean. You just, you just made half of the bunny huggers upset. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, and you know, dogs have their own space. Right, should. So, you know, you don't charge anyone. You're walking a dog in the store, or you're a head dog, and the kid runs up to the dog, and that's his space, you know. Teach them yeah. to invite the dog into their space. And they'll tell you right there the dog wants to come over there or not after he's having a good day or a bad day, you know? You know, don't put your face in a dog's face. I won't even do that with my dogs. That dog's come that close to my, unless he comes up and licks me or something, I'm still like, man, I just, that's one of my rules. I, I don't like a dog in my face, but I won't go in a dog's face. Yeah. I just won't, I won't do it. I mean, if he comes up and licks me, fine, but I'm not going to go up there getting, oh, you snap, now I lose half a cheek. <laughs> you know? Yeah. The other thing kids are bad at is taking away something from a dog. Preach on, brother. Preach you, on. You do not take it away from a dog. You know, if you're playing tug or whatever, but kids shouldn't be doing that anyway. In my opinion, kids right. shouldn't be playing with anything to do that considers bite work. Tugging is fun and all, but, you know, it can get out of hand, you know? Yeah. And if a dog has something that ain't his, Ask a grown-up to take care of it, you know. Because I've seen where, basically, 
my house. The dog had a roll, yellow toilet paper. So I opened the bathroom door and I got a roll, roll of toilet paper and freaking destroy it. They just love toilet paper or paper towel. Well, I don't need Mina going in there and, hey, give me that. No, she comes to Carolina or I, hey, the dog has something. I've nope, taught her that. Don't, don't. You just don't. Right, right. You know, I get big dogs, but no matter the size of the dog, I don't care if it's a 10, six pound Pomeranian. You just don't. And right. bites her too. Right. You know? And it, so. What? So what? There are a few things, you know. That when you're petting a dog, you, you know, my rule is call her down. So if you're petting the dog, puppy your dog or something, you know, call her down. You never grab the collar and you never go over top, over top of the collar. You know, now Mina, she's all over the dogs. Well, yeah. But she's built that she, up over two years. Right. And the dogs love her. Right. But she doesn't lay on the dogs and she, you know. There's no Mina's there. our mini agitator, by the way, is Scott's daughter. Yeah. But, you know, I'm just, you know, relying someone hugging down such big evil dogs or evil, they say? Huh? What did that lady say? How can you have. Anyway, she was evil dogs, but just those kind of dogs. I say those kind oh, of dogs are on, yeah. are on that child. And Mina's walking the store and she has her arm on. Around the dog. The dog and yeah. McCoy, too. And, you know, it's like, you know, I have no answer for you. I just walked on like a good citizen would. <laughs> so, you know, well, ignorance is bliss. It's what? Ignorance is bliss, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's some things, but that's just like a few things there. Respect the dog. Right. But the kids don't know that, see, unless the parents teach it. So that comes, Secret. it comes from raising your kids not to put their hand in hot water. It's that way, how to hold a don't run a pair of scissors, right? Simple stuff. Yeah, you know, the, and you just you just nailed it. When my first answer, when people call me about a dog growling at their kid who just tried to steal the dog's food bowl is, you know, if it's Thanksgiving dinner and I walk up to you and snatch that turkey out of your hand, are you gonna be a little upset with me? I think you will. And, and granted, I'm gonna hear some people say, well, all of my dogs, I can take the food away from them anytime I want. That's great. You taught them to tolerate that. You didn't just walk up and suddenly do it. And that's when children get hurt. They just all of a sudden take a notion to grab a dog's toy or food, and we don't know the dog's reaction because he hasn't been <coughs> trained to go that way like some of you have trained your dogs to put up with that. My dogs all let me pick up their food bowl. I get right in there. I get right in there. Yeah. And... And I'm actually a little older than four. So I probably had the ability to train the dog to do that. Yep. And when people ask me, they say, I need to train my dog not to. So my question to all of your friends who may be asking all you trainers out there, when someone says, can you teach my dog not to growl at my kid? Ask them this really simple question. Your child or your dog? Which one speaks better English? If it's the child who's got a bigger vocabulary than the dog, then you're going to have better luck communicating with the child, right? Teach your damn kid to keep his hands away from the dog's food bowl. You can tell the child he shouldn't do that. You can't tell your dog you shouldn't growl at him or you shouldn't bite him and expect him to understand it on the first try. You can train your dog to tolerate those things, absolutely. But your best shot to keep accidents from happening in your home is just what Scott said, teach the child. You and the child are speaking the same language. You and your dog are learning to understand each other. So there's a there's a big disconnect there. Well, it also goes with <clears throat> the owners of the dogs too. We need to realize and recognize, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, the dog has floppy ears, soft eyes, squints. You know, they're fine. You know, they're, they're relaxed. The dog's ears are up, starts yawning. You know, I, I, the white of their eyes and whatnot. 
dog's not in the best state of mind, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. You know, when they're good, their tail's wagging low, you know, all that good stuff, right? So a guy asked me today, this is funny. So I went and I was talking to a friend about Carol Ann and how we do training. He came up and I went to the other office and he came here and said, hey, you got a minute? I said, yeah. He goes, I got a pit bull. I said, okay. And the lady in the room was there, goes, oh, here we go. And I looked at her like, okay, here we go. I said, so I've met a lot of pit bulls in my day and they're all pretty cool dogs. And he goes, well, we're at a family function. Red flag. Because everybody, the dog was in there, everybody's like 15, 20 people in the, in the house, and we're all running and playing with the dog, and everybody's just petting on him. All of a sudden, he just went up and bit, bit somebody in the face. But she was just rubbing his face and playing with him. <laughs> and I was like, okay, these pit bulls, have, are they crazy? Do they, do they just go wacko and flip a switch? I'm like, how long have you had the dog? He was like, five years, and you never done that before. Yeah. So how many times have I had a family guy that big? Quite often. But it's the first time we thought he's old enough now. He's five. We let him out to join the, the family. I said, this is the first time you have the dog out in, a, in your own home, in a public setting with a house full of people that are talking and the dog just, you know, I said. Five years old. So what's wrong with that picture? He goes, the dog. I said, no, you. <laughs> I said, you can't, you know, kind of explain to him the nuances a little bit. Yeah. Trying to shed some light on the subject. But, you know, if it got through, it got through. But it's, you know, it's, you can't introduce a dog into something like that. No. Well, he knows everybody there. I say, yeah, everybody there. But everybody wasn't there all at the same time. At one time, right. You know, there wasn't a TV on. They were playing Frisbee outside. There's loud music. And people are pounding, getting them roughed up, you know. <laughs> Maybe you just got excited. Probably. So I don't, can you tell me something? I can't tell you, you know. I said, but like I told him, most of the time, there's so many more factors. There's always a why. Why did the dog bite me? Then you go into and you got to be like on the NCSI, and you got to start being a detective and yep. backtracking the steps. Right. And 99% of the time, you're right. It's not the dog did. It's just what you did or mm -hmm. didn't do. Mm -hmm. You know. And and if you what Scott's talking about, let's go to the next point of this. If your dog bites somebody. And depending on the city you live in and how paranoid these people are about dogs. I mean, I know a city in Texas where if your dog is in a city park and a squirrel runs out of a tree and your dog grabs the squirrel and does dog-like things to the squirrel, if someone sees it and reports your dog, he can be quarantined for 10 days for biting. You then have to go to JP court and you can be charged with owning a vicious dog and you'll have to carry extra insurance, muzzle him when he goes out, yada, yada. Now, you know, we got, we got those truly bleeding heart areas. Then you got places where, you know, when I grew up, it was a simple deal. People thought differently about animals in my generation and in Scots. But people lived with animals. More people grew up on a farm with animals all around them. More people grew up trapping, hunting, things of this nature. So we had a different, whole different thought take on it. Today, most dogs can be put down if they scratch a child and you report it. And if you go to a doctor in Texas, the, do the doctor is required to report the dog scratch. When I grew up, I could be next door playing with Miss, Miss D's bulldog and something would happen and this, this happened. And he could reach up and correct me. We call it a correction in the guard dog business. That's those bites that make everything really red, maybe have a little bit of blood bubbling up. That's a correction. That's the dog telling you, you better stop. A dog bite, a dog bite, you can see muscle in a dog bite, right? But Miss D's bulldog, he bit me, well, he bit me several times, I'll admit. But he nailed me the first time and I went home crying because I was about eight years old and I told daddy, <laughs> Buster bit me, uh, what are you gonna do? And he said, 
Drop your drawers, quit teasing the dog, and he give me a whooping. Now, I don't want to sound too colloquial. I don't want to sound too far back in the swamps, but he understood the dog bit me because I did something I shouldn't do. And that's going to be the case 85% of the time. You're going to run into dogs, but they're going to be a dog you own. You'll run into dogs on the street, dogs that when it, that shouldn't be around people in the first place, yeah. you know, and you're going to run into dogs that idiot people are owned and raised without socialization that are going to be snappers and biters at anything that moves because they're not used to people. That's a whole other world. Your own dog, if someone is bit, <laughs> term bit, in your home, that someone is to blame. Period. For those of you, I know the term old school is a popular phrase among a lot of dog trainers. If you go old school, if you think you're old school, you better step up and man up to that belief. If my dog bites my kid in my home, I have failed teaching and raising that kid. Simple. Simple. Now. No, no, no. That's true. But you, you know, and I'm not gonna get into this tonight. But the introduction of the kid and the chicken under the egg. Who came first? Right. 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 You know, so if you get a dog first, and the kid comes along, and the dog don't like the kid, and it happens, someone's got to go. That's my bottom line. If you know, oil and water. You can try, right? But you know, there's other things besides that. And the other thing I was gonna say, you know, as for the dog itself, it may sound stupid or whatever, but you know, I walk in the store and my dog. I'm walking the dog. And some kid, oh, can we pet your dog? I said, <laughs> I said, don't ask me, ask the dog. And they're like, what? I said, ask them. They'll ask them. Yeah. And most of the time they'll be all right, but sometimes the dog takes two steps back, you know, but they're coming quick. So I always tell them to ask the dog. As stupid as that sounds, I've read it somewhere else also, so I am not stupid. The best way to get a dog to like you is to ignore him. Let him take yeah. you in on his his territory, you know. And now i got to tell the one joke. You know, it's, this one's been around the block about 27 times, but I got, it's like I was sitting on a park bench one day with my dog. When they were, I was sitting on the park bench. This guy walks up and says, can I, wow, it's a good-looking dog you got there. Can I, pet, can I pet your dog? And I go, sure. He said, does he bite? And I said, I don't, you can pet him. He reaches down to pet him, dog reaches up and bites that stranger right on the hand, takes half his little finger off. Guy jumps back and says, I thought you said your dog doesn't bite. He said, well, my dog doesn't, but I don't know who's that dog is. Look <laughs> <laughs> at my dog, right? dog that is. So, so what do you do if there is a dog bite? And, and what time do you have to panic and run to the ER? And let's face it, I mean, there's people going to these emergency rooms for dog bites that are going to spend thousands of dollars, or at least they're deductible on their insurance. So how do we know when to go? I'm going to give you the anatomy of dog bite. This is, this is how we judge them in the guard dog industry. You have red marks where a dog hits and turns loose. That's what we call a correction. That's that dog telling you, stop whatever you're doing, back away. Obviously, if there's no skin broke, you don't have to go to a doctor. Now, the next one is a nip. A nip says you've gone a little bit further than you should, but I'm still going to give you a little second chance. And they're going to hit you, and they're going to puncture. You're going to have generally the fangs are going to puncture, and you'll have one or two uh, marks on top and, and one on the bottom, okay? So now you're going to have some bleeding. Hydrogen peroxide. Anyone who owns a dog should have hydrogen peroxide. If no you take, mercury? Huh? No oh. mercury. No mercury. No, no, no. Oh, we're going to get to that in just one second, Carolyn. Get you a couple of, get you, depending on where the bite is, if you can soak it immediately with hydrogen peroxide, if it's, 
If it's on your finger, stick your hand in a bowl full of peroxide, wait 15 minutes. If it's on a body part, get you some cotton balls, fill them with peroxide, 15 minutes. You will stop any possible infection that could occur simply by using that hydrogen peroxide. Some people watching this are gonna write in and say, but it'll burn your skin if it's there for 15 minutes. I have had body parts, the names of which I will not bring up specifically, in hydrogen peroxide for up to a half hour because I had blood poisoning. It didn't burn my skin. That with antibiotics did stop the blood poisoning. So hydrogen peroxide is your best friend. Now, when do you need to seek medical attention? When does it get past home remedy? Wait, you had a question? Was it on a dog bite, Carolyn? Or a no. statement? No, statement? Nope. Okay, so when you get, when the skin tears and you can see a yellowy material below it, that's your subcutaneous layer, okay? It may not even bleed, but depending if it's more than just a nice round smooth, if it's a nice round smooth hole, it's going to be healed in four days. You won't even know where it was in seven days. But if you have any tearing of the, of the skin, tearing, you need to get to ER, okay? You're going to follow the same procedure with the peroxide, but you need to get to an ER. You want to leave that wound open. You never want to stitch a dog bite because it can, there can be bacteria from their mouth that could be trapped in there. If you've done your peroxide, you don't have to worry about those things. So if, you're, if, if you get a bite that looks like the skin is, the flesh is torn, go to the ER. Anything less than that, all that's gonna happen if you go report something less than that is that dog is gonna end up at a dog pound for quarantine they're going to bill you for that quarantine, by the way. <laughs> so. They make you pay it up front in Burleson. They make you pay it up front, Carol Ann? Yes. Been there? Been there, done that. All right, all right. So um, that's what you're going to do. Now, I mentioned, whoops. If, if it's you know worse than that, of course, you're going to go. But rarely do dog bites in a home get past the tearing of the skin part, where they'll require stitches or even a long stay in the ER. Um, once in a while they will, depending on the type of, if a dog's real excited when he does bite, he may not be able to control his excitement and it could get, you know, it could get serious. But the biggest problem with dog bites that the average person's going to encounter are going to be the danger of infection after the bite. Uh, the biggest danger uh, of a dog bite that a suspect who runs from a cop is going to encounter is could be the further use of that limb for the rest of his life because mm -hmm. you know <laughs> the right Scott's uh, mm. uh, because a, a you know a good properly trained dog dogs that don't are not trained to bite are generally going to bite and release bite and release once you train them like the ones you see driving around in the car with your local police officer smiling, waving at all the kitties. That sucker gets a hold of you just right. There's gonna be some tendons missing. Yeah. <laughs> There's, you know, you're gonna have body parts that never really work the same way again. So I'm just saying, if, if the cop with the dog in his car says, you know, uh, put your hands behind your head, stand on one foot, dance up and down and whistle Dixie, you better get to whistling. <laughs> So, what else do you think, Scott? That covers it for tonight, it seems like. And we could sit here for another two hours and go through all scenarios and yeah. do's and don'ts about it, but that's pretty much covered, you know, I was trying to cover basically the common stuff that yeah. you're a layman. I'm sure these people watching that's understand all that, but the layman out there that just doesn't understand. Right. And they blame the dog for everything, which they shouldn't, you know. So. Mm -hmm two-way street right but there are dogs you said dogs out there that shouldn't be around people yeah and yeah they, there are they, they, you they, stay away from them sons of guns now let's talk about a couple of those real quick but one reason we went to this extra part was you know we got dog trainers on marino connie corso and uh, thank you sir um, 
that are listening to this. And uh, he's a breeder, so he may not have as much of that problem. But Gypsy up in Chicago, I have no doubt has already gone through this. The trainers that may be on here, you're gonna have clients that may or may not come to you when a dog bites somebody or puts them in a bad situation. So this is for you to help them. There's one other situation that can occur, and this is for that little, let's call it 3% of dogs Scott's talking about, the dogs that really have no business being on the street. What do you do if you do run across one of these dogs? How do you keep yourself from being seriously injured in a dog bite? What if you're like a meter leader going through people's backyards? How do these guys keep from getting seriously hurt? This is a little, and again, going back to the guard dog industry, you know, we had dogs that, uh, we had dogs on more than one occasion who had a crook cornered, hiding in a car, uh, hiding in a garbage dumpster, and it's six o'clock in the morning, time to pick the dog up and leave, and the dog's sitting there like a coon hound that has a guy tr treed, a coon treed, and he wants to get in there and get this guy. He's been trying to get him all night, and now you show up, and he ain't happy with you. And he will turn, and they will turn on the, on the handler because they're in such a high state of excitement, and they'll nail the handler. So what we did when, in the guard dog business, well, we always had a burlap sack stuck in our back pocket. So we had something. The key to stopping a determined dog that wants to bite you from biting you is really simple. At a certain level of excitement, anything that's in his mouth will do to calm him down. And the number one rule of dogdom in the dog world is remember this, if it's in my mouth, it's mine. You can't take it, all dogs, I don't care if it's a Chihuahua or an English Mastiff. So, if you're in a situation where a dog jumps the fence in a junkyard, for instance, and comes after you, and this dog is getting ready to come at you, maybe he's lunging, making small bites, how do you protect yourself? Real simple. Take off your jacket, your shirt, whatever you got, roll it up, and the next time the dog lunges, stick it right in his mouth. Then pull on it. Remember what I said? In the, dog, in the dog world, if it's in his mouth, it's his. His brain is gonna completely detach from you what he thought was a potential threat and go to doing nothing but keeping his now captured prey. With that shirt in, your, in that dog's mouth, you can pull him, let's take a meter reader situation, or one of my handlers, guard dog handlers. You pull the dog, and give a little. You pull the dog, every time you pull, you take two steps. You look for that gate. When you get right to the gate, you go to one hand, you let the dog pull a little harder, a little harder. You turn loose, flip the gate, and step out. You don't let go until you're out. Right. Because if you let go until you're out, he'll drop that and come back at you. Yeah, yeah, when he drops it, you'll come back at you. But he's gonna back up, pull yeah, it, well, if yeah. you've been pulling. Yeah. So you got a, you got a little yeah, window there. Don't let go until you're out. Yeah, yeah. So. But anytime you're in any situation where a dog may be attacking you, put something in his mouth. You can start walking around with a piece of burlap in my back pocket. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, there you go. So anyway, this this was, hopefully this is gonna be helpful to somebody. We saved the Great Dane. Mm -hmm. We want to save more dogs because they're sure being unjustly confined and confused and killed in some cases. So, we don't want that. Yep, we're gonna, I guess call it a night. What do you think, Mr. Sinclair? Yeah, I think, you know, it's about family, but the bottom line is it's all about the dogs. Don't forget that. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, folks.